I think I'll actually put these clips up for download so you guys go through it and test them yourself. Uh, probably not the one with my face in it just because I don't know what people are going to do with that, but the rest you guys can have, so enjoy. So basically what I learned is ProRes on the Komodo is still highly usable. RAW obviously still has its benefits as you still have all that detail that you could change the ISO and change your output map and your highlight roll off and everything in post and just getting prime like dynamic range of color details out of your footage just using RAW. But if you don't need all of that like extra sauce within that clip, then I think rocking ProRes is totally fine. So I just ran some like non-scientific tests, nothing too crazy, but you can see this is Red Raw. This is how it plays back. We're on a 4K timeline, so you can see Red Raw pretty much plays back just fine. The ProRes plays back just fine. Now, when you're doing an actual edit on an actual like heavy timeline and you're doing color grading and you have multiple clips stacked on each other, the red raw starts to lag a little bit. Perez raw will lag sometimes too on that, but it kind of holds up a little bit better. See, we just have multiple clips going on. So the node setups I'm doing on here, I'm just using uh, the Komodo 2 Alexa by, I, th I forgot, I think uh, Miguel's is his name. He made these uh, conversion LUTs over here. Let's just start this clip. This is a very high contrast situation. Um, I wasn't testing for sharpness or anything like that. I care more about dynamic range and just like overall usability. So um, let's just turn on this node. All I have going on in here is just, I'm taking the lights in the HDR node down by negative one. And then you see our darks are just lifted up there. We could take them up even higher just to see. We see we are getting info clipping on there. Let's just copy that over. ProRes is holding up pretty well. It honestly doesn't look all that different, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so again, this is the red raw. So let's go into our raw settings and let's just take the ISO up to 1600. So you do see this is where raw comes into play. We go and we can lift this ISO up. And then if you look at the details, we have a lot more details in those shadows still. Can go over here. So you see if we lift our exposure up, there's those details are gone. Um, so with Red Raw, this is the point of Raw is you still have all these details that you can really push and post. But if you're in a situation where you don't need all, all that dynamic range and you can expose properly in camera, you don't really need Raw for a lot of those kind of things. Now you see this is a very, 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 high dynamic range shot here. Um, we're gonna go through and let's push this even more. Let's just lift our shadows up. So we are getting some weird thing over here. I did black balance my camera with the lens on the lens cap. So that might be from that or it could just be a flare. I don't know, honestly. But interesting things happening here on the ProRes shot. This is a pink wall in real life. You see the ProRes shots kind of holding that, that detail a little bit better. But in the raw settings, we can easily just go over here and we could dial that pink back in. And you see now the raw looks a little bit more natural. ProRes is still kind of noisy. I thought the Pro would be a little bit more cleaner. So now again, let's go to our ISO and let's lift that. So you see all of a sudden, we're getting a lot more detail in there. Yeah, it's really noisy. On the Zcam versus Komodo video, someone commented saying that the Komodo's dynamic range doesn't count because it's below the noise floor. But if you watch the clips at the end, the clips look totally clean because I put some light noise reduction on. So it's kind of draining when I'm getting all these stupid comments when I just showed in real world use, the dynamic range is highly stretchable. We're getting all this color and detail in the bottom end that we can lift and save and post and which is some simple noise reduction, it's highly usable. This is the dangerous part about all like these super technical tests is you could do lab tests all you want, but once you get into the real world, all that goes out the window. Uh, so let's just go in here. Let's run some simple noise reduction. This isn't what the video is about, but you see, let's just do the chroma noise over here just a little bit. So all of a sudden our image is super clean, but you can see with the red raw, we're able to save all these highlights and still recover a lot of this. Obviously the shot doesn't look great, but it's just showing you how far you can push the red raw. Now let's just push the ProRes just a little bit more before we move on. So you see, there's just that the info is not in there. There's, you can't really do anything about that high dynamic range shot, uh, kind of a shitty shot to be honest, but let's just see pretty similar. Still, uh, the highlights look super similar. 
Uh, the shadows look super similar, uh, but let's just strip all this off. Let's just pump out. So now we're seeing a bigger difference here. Like this looks really clean. Highlight wrote off. Let's do very soft. Let's just go our saturation. Let's boost that up. Okay, so you see when you just use the raw settings, uh, it's really, really, really clean. We can even lift these shadows up. So yeah, this is kind of a whole different thing here. This kind of changes the game right here. So when you're using just the raw settings, again, guys, I'm new to this red. I'm still learning myself. Um, but when you just use their internal raw settings and not a LUT workflow, you see how much further you can push this. Let's use one of the red LUTs on here. And then let's apply this same node. The ProRes still kind of holds up actually when you do it that way. Let's go and let's recover our highlights on here. Again, this is not how I would grade. I'm just doing this just to really stretch the footage. So even in this case, like the ProRes still looks really freaking good. Okay, so you see when you use the actual raw settings, uh, there's a lot more info you get in, out of there. Okay, so for the rest of these tests, I'm going to do this new workflow. I'm just using the raw settings here and then I'm going to the raw clips and I'm just doing a highlight and shadow recovery. And then on the ProRes shot, I'm just running the Log 3G10 to Rec 709, uh, low contrast and soft highlights on there. Uh, and then you see with the ProRes clip, we're still having to push it a little bit more. So again, it's not a super technical test. I'm just going with the flow and seeing what works best. The ProRes still is able to bring back a lot of these shadows. Like if I just turn this off, like look how dark these shadows are compared to this white fence with sun just blaring on it. Uh, you're still able to pull all that back in the ProRes, which is pretty great. Let's see how we can shift these greens up here, just in the hues. Again, this looks horrible. I'm just trying to really stretch this image. See all the greens and how smooth that transition looks. ProRes now and do the same thing. Obviously the saturations are different, but I would say the ProRes is doing pretty well too. If, if you look down in this area, you can see how fine tuned uh, that hue adjustment is, you see this grass isn't being touched as much, and then up here in the corner it is. Now on the ProRes, you see it's a banding just a tiny bit more, but again, we're really pushing this footage just to see what we can do with it. So you see uh, our output tone map is on low, highlight roll off is soft. Then when we go to our ProRes clip, you see the LUT we're using on here uh, is the same thing, low contrast with the soft highlight. So you see they look the same off the bat, but let's go into the raw clip. Let's just bump the saturation up. Again, this is not the workflow I would use, but I'm just pushing it. So you see the ProRes shot looks brighter. Let me make sure this is the raws on 800. It is, so everything's matched perfectly. Let's go into the ProRes clip, just lower our lights down. So you see all the information is pretty much still in that ProRes clip, like it looks fine. Again though, when you go into the raw clip, we could go into the raw settings and start lifting if we need to. Um, but I did have my diffusion filter on here, so I kind of messed up on that, but. So that's pretty much it. So basically what I learned is ProRes on the Komodo is still highly usable. Raw obviously still has its benefits as you still have all that detail that you could change the ISO and change your output map and your highlight roll off and everything in post and just getting prime like dynamic range of color details out of your footage just using raw. But if you don't need all that like extra sauce within that clip, then I think rocking ProRes is totally fine. I think for more of my smaller gigs, I'm actually gonna use the ProRes off the Komodo. I didn't think that would be a thing for me. And then for everything else where I don't have any control over the light and I'm just like chasing cowboys or filming my documentary stuff, I'll probably stick with the red raw just cause it's kind of like a safety net really. But uh, yeah, ProRes raw on the Komodo is amazing. And also from owning a Z cam for like six to eight months and then doing the comparison too, the Z cam still would clip blacks and you weren't able to rescue those. The Komodo part had like another two or three stops of details down low. And even in the ProRes here, you're seeing it's kind of the same situation, uh, possibly a little bit cleaner, but obviously when you go to change out the ISO, you're not gonna have the info there that you would in the raw. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, sorry, I'm not like the super, like most technical polished person that does these comparisons. I'm all about we're real real world use i don't know why that's so hard to say so again just these tests right now just proved to me that progress raw is totally usable and you get more size uh off your memory card too for it so that's always a plus but hey guys that's pretty much it